and then there were four. After 53 regular season games across three cities over five weeks, it all comes down to this, WNBL Finals. The talent-laden Southside Flyers, desperate for the title which eluded them last season. Now it's finals, the bar's set even higher. We've got to come prepared, ready to go. A red-hot Townsville on fire under coach of the year, Shannon Seabong. We've had to earn everything that we've gotten and it'd be amazing to finish it off with the new championship. The UC Capitals playing for their first ever three-peat. Well, it will be a challenge, um, but I like the ring to that. <laughs> And the Melbourne Boomers, season finalists chasing championship glory. Up for the challenge, this is what we play for. We play to be a part of finals games, to be a part of the finals, to, to win championships. It's win or go home for the Caps or the Boomers in tonight's cutthroat final. Canberra playing to keep its hopes of a three-peat alive. Melbourne, the scenic route to a grand final. The race for the championship starts now. Live from tropical Townsville, Welcome to WNBL Finals. And that's the setting in beautiful Townsville. In four sleeps time, it'll be title town for one of the four teams that remain. We've gone from eight sides down to four, and tonight there'll be just three left in the race for the 41st WNBL Championship. Corbin Middlemass and Laurie Chiswick on hand. Laurie, it's the two-time defending champions, the Canberra Capitals and the perennial finalists in the Melbourne Boomers. What are we in for tonight? Well, Corbin, we can officially say that the Melbourne Boomers are the best defensive team in the regular season. So I would expect that we are probably going to see a bit of a defensive grind in this elimination semi-final because the Capitals aren't far behind. Neither of these teams shoot the three ball consistently this season, but you know what? It is finals time and anything can happen. Let's take a look at the starting five for both of these teams and there's a change in the backcourt for the two-time defending champs. Well, we see that uh, Talia Tupea is back in the starting lineup after her shoulder injury, replacing Kabila, and then we have the strength, the physicality, the toughness of Tolo, Frawling and Griffin to round off that starting lineup. And there's the bench and so much depth that we've seen. You mentioned Cabillo who started for much of this year and Jade Melbourne, the teenage sensation from the Canberra Capitals. Let's have a look at the Melbourne Boomers lineup and there's a lot of familiar names in this starting unit. Well, it's great to see the, the three Opals players in uh, Majin, George and Magbabor all featuring in the awards early in the week. So expect to see big things from them and the sharp shooting of Maddie Garrick and Caratiana. We take a look at the bench there for uh, the Melbourne Boomers. There's no Rachel Antoniato, so one of the development players missing with a hand injury. Um, having come off the bench for much of the season. Both these teams, Laurie, have earned reputations in recent times in the playoffs. Unfortunately for the Melbourne Boomers, their reputation is that they haven't got it done this time of the year. For the Canberra Capitals, they've converted. They're the two-time defending champs, as we know. What do the Boomers have to do tonight to get the win? Well, we know that their, their big players are going to get it done inside, so, so points are going to come from there. But I really think that somebody or, or a couple of people need to light it up from the outside. So whether that's Madgen, whether it's Garrick, Ter Karatiana, even Izzy Wright coming off the bench, they have to find some perimeter points. You mentioned Tess Madgen. She caught up with our own Megan Husswade a short time ago, as did Kelsey Griffin. Well, Tess, it's been seven seasons since you last played in a final. You must be ready and raring to go. I sure am. I'm a lot has happened in those seven years and, you know, I couldn't ask for a better team to play this final with. You sat out a few games last week. How are you going? Yeah, good. I'm feeling good, ready to go, fresh, mentally, physically. You beat them comprehensively last time you met. Do you take some confidence out of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was two weeks ago. We're a lot better now than we were then and so are they. So. We've got to come out. It's definitely going to be one over 40 minutes. Um, we know that, so we've got to come in locked in for the full 40 minutes tonight. Thanks, Tess. Good luck tonight. Thank you so much. Kelsey, another WNBL final for you tonight. Does the feeling ever get old? <laughs> no, it never gets old. You never want to take it for granted, but 
like I've been telling my side, you know, this is what we prepare for. We approach every game the same way, you know, approach every training the same way. And so um, it's just exciting to be here. How do you think you can draw on your finals experience and the success of the last two seasons to win this cutthroat final? I think it's um, a career experience, I suppose, as much as finals experience and trying to be a level head and um, help the girls to understand that they've done the work, we've prepared the right way. And now it's about just going out and executing all the hard work that we've done. Thank you. All the best tonight. No worries. So Kelsey Griffin speaking there with Megan Husway and all in readiness, the Boomers and the Capitals, the two best defensive teams in the competition. We know the old adage, Laurie, that defence wins championships. Only one of these teams will remain in the race for the title after tonight. Well, it's been such a unique season, this 2020 WNBL season. And so, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of... Um, Oh, I'm not sure. Nostalgia that that for both teams out here thinking, you know, we could be on a plane tomorrow or we're, um, you know, hopefully continuing on to Friday night. Megan Husswaite is courtside. It's the first of two games tonight with the home team to feature in the major semi later. Megan, what's it like courtside? <laughs> well, there's a lot of orange T-shirts here already, Corbin and Laurie, taking in the first game of a huge doubleheader, but really great support for the Caps and the Boomers with the borders open. There's family and friends and supporters here to cheer on their teams in this cutthroat final. Win or go home. Only one of these teams will advance tonight. The Melbourne Boomers with the first touch of the ball. He's Magmagor in the low block and gets the shooter's roll. So Ezzy Magmagor, the WNBA champ, starts the scoring. Melbourne with the first points. It's always good to get the first points in, in a game like this. Oh, and Alan Over and backcourt going against the Canberra Capitals, a loose handle, a loose pass, and Matty Rocci with the error. I felt that that's how they started against Southside. Just a little bit of nerves, a bit of tentativeness. They had some uncharacteristic turnovers, so hopefully they can settle into this game quickly. There's eight straight points out of the gates for the Flyers. Six on the red numbers here. Garrett goes back to Caratiana. I don't know if Melbourne's awake to this or not. They're going to run out of time. It's a shot clock violation to go against the Melbourne Boomers. Do they only have a 14 there? Well, oh. I, I, it certainly wasn't 24 seconds. Yeah. I, that was a little odd. Oh, I, I must admit, maybe I was... Maybe they, the referees decided that Rachi hadn't had full control of it, so mm. just kept it at 14 seconds or however long was left on the clock. Certainly caught the Boomers by surprise as well. And Capitals ball here. The clock at 14, the shot clock. Baseline ball for the Caps. Rolling on the inbounds. Away to Rochi. Dribble penetration, shot up, and it's good. So Rochi, after the early error, gets some points at the other end. That's a really good drive, an initial drive by Rochi, making sure that she uh, absorbed any of the contact and finished strongly. Here's Garrick to go off the dribble, lays it up and in. That's not something we see a lot of from Maddie Garrick. She's usually a three point shooter or a pull up jump shooter, so to see her go to the basket, that's a good sign to pay out with that shoulder injury throughout the season. But among the starters tonight, Rochi pulls the trigger. A little long on the shot. Caratiana strong on the boards. Pulls it down for the Boomers to Ezzy. Kicks it back out. Garrick on the perimeter. Feeds it back to Magbegor. Spin move on Griffin. Shot up. Misses. Frolling on the rebound. Magin gets in the passing lane and takes it away from Tapaya. Second look at the offense for the Boomers. He's Garrick for three, rings out, Griffin on the rebound. It was a good shot to take. Go, go ahead, go ahead. He's frolling down low, Tolo, nice shot. Puts it up and the drop, so four points each of two. One and done semi-final tonight. The first of two semis to come a little later. Southside Flyers and the Townsville Fire in the major semi, so the winner there goes straight through to Sunday's decider. Is Tess Magin, time running out on the shot clock, four seconds left. Magin to George, she shoots, she's got it off. Nice pick and pop, and Kayla George bangs down the straight on three. Well, I mean, they were lucky there was a switch, and the switch was the right thing to do as the clock ticked down, but at least then Kayla was able to shoot over a smaller hand, and now they're back in the... Uh Offensive spotlight again. They look locked in early to Melbourne Boomers. A nice block from Ezzy Magdegore. The Boomers who lead it by possession. 
Off the pick and roll, Magic inside the keyway, out to the corner, Caratiana got it. Back to back threes for the Boomers. That's exactly what we talked about in our opener, Corbin. They need those players to light up. They need to put that scoreboard pressure on. Here's Rochi driving, draws the foul, count them and one to come. For Matty Rochi, her second made basket. It wasn't only a great drive by, by Rochi for her to finish the score, but she got Magdebor in an awkward position and drew that first foul. And we know how important it is for Ezzy to stay out of foul trouble when it comes to the Boomers. They played twice already this year, split those two results in the regular season. Megan Huswait courtside. Canberra certainly feel that there's a big role for Rochi to play tonight. She was quite against the Flyers on Sunday, but had a big day at the awards on Monday with a top five finish in the MVP and also a top three finish in the Betty Watson Youth Player of the Year. Breakout season for her, Maddie Rochi, still at just 22 years of age. Made the extra at the foul line. Griffin, great work. Preempted the pass from Magic. Here's Tapia. Out to Rochi. Tolo swings it to the weak side. Dribble penetration from Griffin. Shot goes up, doesn't go, and Tolo on the O board. Hands it back to Griffin. That's just something neither team can afford is to give anybody, uh, you know, any O board so that they get second chance opportunities. Caratiana will be called for the block here. Mentioned the two early season meetings. Laurie, they're interesting games. The Boomers came from behind the last time they met in Townsville. Trailing at the half, they outscored Canberra 36 to 29 in the second half. Magma Gore with a big double double, and Matty Garrick hitting five threes. At the early season meeting between the two teams, it was in Mackay. The Boomers went 0 of 16 from the three point line, so he emphasised off the top about the perimeter shooting. Not even the perimeter shooting, but just shots from the outside. If they can get a few of them to drop tonight, as Rochi again draws the foul. Through the paint, makes the basket. Another foul shot coming up. The chance for Matty Rochi to lock it up early. Well, there was really no need to foul that from behind. I mean, there, were, there was good help side defense. I love how Rochi just has her eyes up on that target straight away. Really good finish. So back to that three point plays for Matty Rochi. The lead for the Boomers about the rights. Nice start to the one and done semi final. To pay up the pressure on Madge and the ball handler. Madge off the dribble, works inside, kicks it out. Garrick decides to shoot anyway. <laughs> no problems with that shot. Matty Garrick feeling it early. Three seconds left on that shot clock. That was much needed. Defender's handed Rochi right in her face as Rochi cutting baseline. The first layup doesn't go for Froling. Here's Garrick in transition. Out to Magmador as he lays it up. Melbourne by five. That was great running the floor and really Kayla George had gotten down to the point of the rim first and was just able to keep her player set that screen for Magdebor to be able to go clearly all the way to the basket. Around the horn the Caps go to Payer. Shares it with Griffin, back to Tapia, here's Tolo up top. Seven seconds left on the shot clock, Froling driving, hand on it on the way through, Madgen, great work defensively. And now the early advance, up to Garrick, sets, doesn't quite connect on the shot, and out it goes over the baseline, camera ball. It's a good shot to take, she's just nailed one down the floor the previous trip, so if they can nail a transition shot, Kayla George was there for the rebound, just rimmed out. To emphasize these two teams, their work defensively, the number one and the number two defensive teams in the comp, Melbourne leading that category. On the offensive side of the ball, Canberra averaged 78 points a game and Melbourne 77. As Griffin from the corner, a little short. Imagine on the boards again. It's a very intriguing matchup with the Beaks, Corbin. So we've got uh, Mag Babor and George and Tolo and Griffin. They're switching on each other, there's different looks. There's Magdegore, goes to work on Tolo and comes up with the basket. It's so nice when a big player, and really all of these players on the court, their bigs can do that. Take another player off the dribble from that elbow area. Rochi step back, deep two, misfires. Trying to scoop it up, Magin. Difficult to judge, last touch by Tess Magin, says the ref. Canberra ball are already into the bench. 
He's been really smart out there on the floor. Meanwhile, the Melbourne Boomers still with their five starters. Have a look saw, at this again. Just saw the brains trust there of uh, the Melbourne Boomers in Paul Flynn, Larissa Anderson, and Guy Malloy. Here's Griffin in the corner. Touched by Garrick on the way through. More changes, so Kelsey Griffin will have a seat now as Michaela Roof comes in. She looked good, Kelsey. Well, a little bit worried, I think, after yeah. leaving here on Sunday, thinking she didn't play at all in the last quarter. Is she carrying an injury at all? But a nice start for her. Yeah, she looked really good out there. Nothing, nothing wrong. She was moving really well. She was being physical. So that's really good that we're seeing her out there. And there's Jade Melbourne, who's dominated a bit of the water cooler conversation so far throughout the WNBL, the 18-year-old. You can see really. the Boomers are in a zone right now. His toll I down low to Melbourne, put the shot up, doesn't go. Now the shot clock violation is going to be called. I think every Canberra player thought it hit the rim. The refs say no, it'll be Melbourne ball. Megan Husswaite courtside. What an exciting moment for Jade Melbourne. Two months ago, she wasn't on a WNBR list. Tonight, she makes her finals debut. Defending Madgen here, Melbourne. Madgen takes her to the rack, draws the foul on the way through. In the act of shooting, so foul shots coming up the test. The thing about Madgen, when you look at her drive, it's not exactly explosive, but she's so precise with her movement and precise in her finishes, knows how to use her body and get stuck into a defender when she's trying to finish. It's been a big week with the awards on, uh, on Monday, and Tess Madgen Picking up another gong, part of the all WNBL second team. Tessa's got such a great uh, basketball IQ, and that's uh, for her to lead this team and, and you know play a lot of that point guard position. It's um, it's great for her that she's had such a good season. Nine and zero run for the Melbourne Boomers. Tolo inside the key, lost the handle. Melbourne come up with it again. Madgen out the back, back to Madgen. Off the pick, Magnagor up top, thought about the shot, dumps it down low to George, who draws the foul. Magnagor show, uh, showed a lot of patience there that she got the ball, she was looking, just waiting for Kayla to get that bit better position on Tolo before she passed it inside, so the timing was really good. Tolo's first personal. Here's George back inside the Magnagor. Spin move to the basket. Easy Magnagor. Up to eight points in this opening quarter. And Melbourne lead by 11. That was such a nice move to watch. She just must have felt where her player was and was able to spin, read that and spin and just finish beautifully. It's not happening for the Capitals at the moment. Melbourne rolling in this opening quarter. Magdagore lost it. Nice work. Cabillo comes up with a strip. Look at the pace on Jade Melbourne as she lays it up and in to the open floor. Just blew past Tess Madgen off the dribble and that breaks the run of 11 straight points for the Boomers. How great is that to see the young Jade Melbourne just out there in the full court? Is he right? To Magdagore. Out to Beck, six left on the shot clock. Stella Beck puts it up, tough layup, doesn't go. Well, there's a whistle. Britt Smart's going to be called for the contact as Magnagore hits the hardwood. What's Smart there, number two? It's a little shove on Magnagore. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. Oh, I guess it just got her in the wrong spot. Meg for went to the um, went to the ground. Nine point game. Great little basket cut. Matty Garrick finishes it off. Sit play. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind that one and get a get a copy of that play. That was very nicely executed. It's been a great start for the Melbourne Boomers. And it's coming undone early here for the Capitals. Griffin chucks it away. This, not on point at the moment, not quite lockstep the Canberra Capitals. I sort of feel this is this is 
remnants of what happened against the Flyers in that they just were a bit fumbly, um, second-guessing themselves, and they just really need to get back to the basics of what's gotten them to back-to-back -to -back titles in this far in the finals. They trailed 26 to 12 in that game. It's currently 23 to 12. Perhaps it's about to be 26 as well. Izzy Wright makes it just that. Right on cue, Izzy Wright bangs down the bomb from up top. And that scoreline returns to haunt the Capitals in this opening quarter. Griffin, shot up, doesn't go. Roof lost the handle. Smart, puts it up and in. Good second, third effort by the Capitals, and that's what they need. Maybe that'll inspire them. At the other end, trying to get the quick basket. Purcell, Magnagor, mops it up, finds the bottom. I sense that, that the, the Boomers are have a real focus on running. Uh, I haven't seen them run this much in a while where they get a good rebound and they are gone. It's the equal highest scoring opening quarter of the year for the Melbourne Boomers with 28 points already. Melbourne draws the foul, cutting to the hoop. She'll head to the line to add the extra. What a fantastic, just such basic basketball. A little give and go, pass it into Roof. Dry, uh, cut along that base back line. Roof got it back to her, and now we see her at the line. Really smart play by uh, Jade Melbourne. She had 20 points, Jade, back on November 18 against... Say November 18 as if it's that long ago. <laughs> Obviously, such a condensed season. It was the first time that these two teams met in Mackay. She was taking the competition by storm in the early part of the season. Ice cold. 28 to 17, so back to 11 points. Got to put on some full court pressure, the Capitals. A minute to go in this opening quarter. Here's Garrick. From the elbow, out to Beck. Down to Purcell. Using up a lot of the 24, five seconds left now. Garrick off the dribble, back to Purcell from the foul line. Misses, but fouled. Kalani Purcell the head of the strike. Again, I'm impressed that the Boomers, as that shot clock is ticking down, they're, they're not panicking. Um, Maddie Garrick didn't throw it away. Purcell knew that that clock was uh, near its end, that she had to shoot it up, and now she finds herself at the line. Boomers have won all bar one game they've led at quarter time this year. They're going to be playing from in front this evening in this one and done semi. 30 points in the opening quarter against the Canberra Capitals. Renowned defensive team. Brit Smart has a clean look on the perimeter, doesn't take it. Camillo will. Got it. Drops the triple from the corner, Abby Camillo. She's one of the best three-point percentages in the game, Cabillo. Over 53% of the year. Number one three-point shooter on the side. Yeah, so you don't want to leave her wide open with a look at the basket. One second differential. He's right. Pulls up. And that's good. A hot shooting quarter for the Melbourne Boomers. The dish from Kayla George on the way through. Physical start. No call from the refs on the final play in that opening quarter. And the Melbourne Boomers.
Christmas with their highest scoring opening quarter of the season. You couldn't come at a better time. Laurie Chiswick, you made the comment in the lead up that they had to make some outside shots. Well, they shot the ball at 71% in that opening quarter. Wow, I mean, yeah, that's that's something that they they need. They'd be very happy about. But you know what? They have to continue now. That That's one quarter. They've got to keep playing the same way. They've got to keep playing with that same mindset. And conversely, Canberra, well, they just need to settle into this game, take care of the ball, get a good shot every time down the floor, really work together and not be indecisive at all. Megan Haswhite, you're in the Boomers huddle at quarter time. What did you pick up? Well, Gardner started off by saying we don't want to give Canberra easy shots like they made late in that turn. Interesting to know, Ezzy Magdegore not starting in this second term. She's taken a seat on the bench. Magdegore just the one personal foul. The only player with two so far in the game is Ash Karatiana. Scoring in that opening quarter, back the goal with 10.7 for Matty Garrick. Meanwhile, for the Capitals, Matty Rochi leading the way with eight points. Four possession game. Here's Magic off the dribble. It all opens up for him. This is the layup. Throws it out to the corner. Is he right for three? Left it short. They left some points behind on that trip down the floor. She did when she when she missed that layup. I think it was the fact that Kelsey Griffin did a great job of just hedging and making Magin sort of think twice should she pass, should she shoot it. Um, so good job for Kelsey Griffin. It's a clean look from Izzy Wright. Didn't go. Catch and shoot. Well, Kelsey Griffin puts it up straight away. She wanted. The foul call on Kayla George, never got it. We knew it was going to be a physical game coming in. Laurie Chiswick, both these teams like to play in that manner. Certainly the Canberra Capitals built their brand on it. The team that's won the past two championships in the WNBL. Here's Garrick, puts the shot up, no good. Oh board from Purcell on the putback drops. So that's the thing, if you've got some uh, great rebounders in position and you shoot that shot, well then they're going to be able to clean up and, and give you those, you know, putbacks. You need people going after the uh, offensive glass. His Tola just goes to work, bangs bodies with George, shot goes up, no good. Tolo on the baseline to Froling and out to Rochi. What a great battle that is, George and Tolo. Rochi trying to make her way through the lane. Last touch by Canberra over the baseline. Rochi can't believe she didn't get a call. They're getting the refs happy just to let them roll at the moment and play ball. It's a 14 point game. Melbourne lead it. I don't think there is anything in it. I think Madgen had her arms straight up. Purcell came from behind but dearly didn't make any contact at all. That's pretty well refed, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You usually see the ball carrier take contact like that in the paint and the whistle goes straight away. But as you said on reflection, great call by the ref. Five seconds to go for the end of the shot clock. There's a foul call. It's going to be called on Rochi. And there's Guy Malloy, the coach of the Melbourne Boomers. A little bit worried about Melbourne after their loss against Townsville. Just the emotional letdown from that. I mean, they, they probably felt like this was our game on Sunday up against Townsville. They had a chance to control their own destiny, to lose that and then pick themselves back up. It's right on cue. There's a bit of a disconnect, and Kayla George throws it over the sideline. But to lose that kind of game and then have to pick yourself up into an actual sudden death final just a couple of days later. I think that's where your leaders come into play. So. Kayla George, Maddie Garrett, Tess Madgen, um, you know, they, they're seasoned veterans, they, they know, and, and this season they've really had to sort of drop things quickly and get on with it, so I'm sure they were disappointed, but now they just have to go, well, the road's a bit longer, but uh, the aim is still the same. A violation against Kayla George. Here's Griffin, trying to find a path to the cup. No good, Tolo, likewise, shot blocked by Magdegore. Still a chance for the Capitals. Rochi retreating, lost it. Garrick downhill, shot goes up and in. 
Matty Garrick with the made basket, and Paul Gora says, I want to chat. It's back out to 16 points, the margin. Melbourne, 36, Capitals, 20. And it's all coming up. The boomers at the moment, the purple and gold in this second quarter. Two and a half minutes in, that's a handy spread in the semi-final. Well, they have come out with the idea that we must match and if not be better than Canberra's physicality and, and they have they, their their defense is tough they're bumping cutters out there they're switching aggressively they're talking and and, and Canberra just haven't been uh, as physical as we normally like to see them he's got Malloy ready to address his team up 16. okay let's go head tap two you start this side and as you're going to go back to that side when you rotate back, you got it? Taylor's in the middle. And tap two. Now listen, offensively, stay in what we're doing. Right? Keep working on the short ball to the five men. Looking to reject instead of throw and goes, rejects are there. Here we go. on three, one, two, three. Shooting the ball still at 64% the Melbourne Boomers. This is another category that we touched on. Uh, the rebounding numbers in favour of uh, the Melbourne Boomers. Defensively, it's 11 to 4, and on the offensive end, 5 4 Canberra's way. But the battle of the bigs tonight as we build it in the, uh, in the pregame. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think certainly at this stage of the game, you'd have to say that uh, Mag Gore and, and George certainly have the ascendancy in that uh, big department. Gary is playing a game tonight. We, Put the, uh, the spotlight on her leading in. She comes up with a block shot. She's making shots at the other end up to nine points. And her team leads by 16. A chance to extend to that here. Mag Magor spinning. Garrick again, quick pass. Karatiana off the front of the rim. George out rebounds Tolo. Back to Mag Magor. Shot up, misses. Tolo wrestling for it, lost it again. Wow. The Boomers are just all over things right now. Both ends of the court. Cannot get out of that backcourt at the moment, the Capitals. George trying to feed Magdegore. Back to George, six seconds left. Misses and throwing in the rebound. Well, they're really going inside the Boomers to try and uh, take advantage of Tolo, Griffin to see maybe if they get them in foul trouble, they feel like they're... Uh, Tolo, shot they're... goes up, it's good. Drew the foul, one to come for Mariana Tolo. Well, that's a relief for the Capitals, for Tolo, for the whole team. It was a good penetration, a good find inside. Yeah, they'll all be breathing a sigh of relief that uh, maybe that's breaking the drought. They needed something to try and turn momentum. Absolutely, Mariana Tolo, so four points in the game. Make that five. Griffin's yet to hit. The score sheet, and then you look at Magbagor and George, they have 13 points between them and five rebounds. The boom is by 13 points. And the first points of the quarter, almost four minutes in for the Canberra Capitals. George shoots the deep two, misses. Griffin on the rebound. All the way out to Froling, away to Rochi. Puts it on the floor, shot blocked, Kayla George. No easy scoop lay up in here. Kayla George sent it back. That was such a good timing for Kayla. She kept her distance as Rochi drove. You see, she kept, keeps distance. And then in her outstretched arm was just able to swat that out of here. Griffin hands it off to Rochi. Single digits on the shot clock, Tolo. Deep two, misses the mid-range, put back from Griffin. There's her first points of the game. It was a good block up by Caratiana. It was just the ball bounced the wrong way right into Griffin's hand and a nice finish. Pitching a shutout. Block shot so far. Magbegor from inside the keyway, misses. Another offensive rebound. Kayla George reaching over the top. Her second of the game, halfway through the second turn. Garrick off the dribble. Time running out of the shot clock. Extra pass to Madgen. With two seconds left, long three ball misses the rim. Shot clock violation. 
Capitals will get it back, an 11-point game. I think the Boomers need to be a little bit more active when that shot clock is ticking right down. Get the ball on the floor, maybe then kick it out to a shooter, but there was just a too much standing around. He's Griffin for three. Bounces off the rim, and George scoops it up, and he's going to bring it up the floor. One of five from long range so far, the Capitals. The Boomers are four of nine. To help that number, Karatiana, an air ball. Very uncharacteristic. The pass from Griffin's a turnover. Took a deflection on the way through. Karatiana sets, rims out. The Boomers are doing a good job of slowing the Capitals down so that they don't have any real strong transition. So either they're slowing it right down or the last time they stole it. Karatiana is going to be called for a third, fouling Griffin on her way to the rack. Foul shots coming up for the Caps. Just trying to turn momentum here. The Canberra Capitals. We're trailing by 16 points, Laurie, earlier in the quarter. A couple of made foul shots here, and it'll be back to single digits. Well, you know, we said that at quarter time, when the Boomers were at 32, that they needed to continue this roll. Well, they've only scored four points in the six minutes this quarter. Oh. The long on the first foul shot for Griffin. 71% for the year. The foul on Kelsey Griffin. Second shot's good. Ten point game. Intriguing stage here, four minutes before half time. The Boomers scoring straight up a little bit. Last six points of the game for the Capitals. Make the goal out to Garrick. Garrick pulls up off the dribble, in front of the rim, misses, and Rochi the rebound. Yeah, I think the, the, the Capitals have certainly upped their physicality and, and their disruptiveness with the, um, with the Boomers. They're just not letting them play as freely as they did that first quarter. Tolo tries to muscle her way to the basket. No good. Rebound. Smart for three. Off the rim. Tolo, another go. Shot up. It's Griffin who eventually puts it in. Fourth attempt for the Capitals. They get some points and add eight straight for the Cats. Timeout is going to be called by Guy Malloy and the Melbourne Boomers. And the margin is back to eight. Well, I feel like the quarters have just reversed what we're seeing now with the Caps. We saw with the Boomers in that first quarter. Second chance opportunities, missed blockouts. Um, very interesting, this momentum swings. Got out as wide as 16 points. That's the field goal percentages that first quarter. Just outrageous. The Melbourne Boomers, 8 of 11. Here's Paul Gorris. Kelsey's down. We want to run a rub. Low. So come off it. Kelsey's coming ball screen. Whoever's here, whether it's Mirachi, Tolo, post up. Kelsey, you still get this and be a pinch hit a high low you've got elbow rip. Okay, so Tolo, you're coming trail into here. Wait for the cross screen. We post you up. If not, Kelsey's the pinch hitter. High low or dry drive. Yep. Here we go. Hey, keep on getting the stops and run. What did you make of all that? Well, he was very, um, very precise in what he wanted to, to run this time, and, and uh, you know the instructions of, of Tolo making sure she waits for her screen. And, and I would think that they're either going to look low at Tolo, or they talked about Kelsey getting a rip, a drive from the elbow area. First of two games to be played at Townsville Stadium tonight. Of course, the whole playoffs will be played here, and it's a court that knows how to crown a champion. The Townsville Fire have picked up some trophies here over the years. Later tonight, the Fire up against the Southside Flyers in the major semi. Winners straight through to Sunday's grand final. Here's Magdegore, Brit Smart, clever. Manages to get it away from the Boomers, and now on the open floor, Rochi puts the shot up. It's good. Make that 10 straight points for the Capitals. Two possession game. The Capitals were really alert on that play. There was a mismatch with uh, Tupea and, um, 
and Magnavore. And so I think it was Smart just came through and got that little bit of steel and, and tossed it over. You mentioned earlier it might be a bit of a grind. It hasn't been sort of a fluent 10 points, has it, for the Canberra Capitals. They've had to roll their sleeves up. They haven't done it quite as fluently as what we saw the, the Melbourne Boomers out of the gates, but they've just ground, uh, grinded their way back into this game. Back within six points now, just two possessions in it. They force the turnover here, and that clears the bench. Capitals with possession and down by six. Wow. You know, we talk about momentum swings, and, and you know, again, we talked about this with the south side, you know, the Caps. You use up a lot of energy making a comeback, but I don't know. Right now, they feel uh, things are looking pretty good for them. Tolo throws it up top, smart. Pump fight and then finishes with a deep two. The points continue to come for the Capitals. It's dried up for the Boomers. And that lead continues to evaporate. It's now just four points. I think the Boomers really need to get some inside action, some high low. Magmagor calling for it down low and Griffin comes through to intercept it. All coming up Canberra at the moment. To pay her up the floor, puts the shot up. Stella Black back with the block. Can put the B and the L together in that. It's the seventh block of the game. Have a look at this again. Stella Beck. No thanks. Megan Husswaite courtside. Timeout going to be called here. So Paul Goris. Have a chat to his team, and they're on a 12 0 run at the moment. After trailing by 16 earlier in the quarter. Let's listen in. Here's Paul Goris. Kelsey, as we get that screen in, Tolo try and get the little lob over the top. If not, Kelsey go directly to the corner. Stack, yeah, no, it's square stack. Yep. Stack, stack, yep. So Brit's coming through. You got corner three here if they don't come out. As we go over, Kelsey's got it. Put a tolo on the post up. Okay, and we get it here to Abby. Straight line. Abby, I think they're gonna stand right here, so maybe come over yeah. here. Yeah. If we don't, Kelsey's out in the opposite Keep corner. Keep up the D, here we go. You see, I wonder what was happening over with the Melbourne Boomers. Megan Husswaite, you were listening to Guy Malloy. What was said there? Yeah, the momentum has certainly changed. You can feel it here at ground level, but he did tell his players as he ended that timeout, we're OK, we've just got to execute and get some stops. Win or go home. Semi-final between the Capitals and the Boomers as Rochi shoots the three from the corner. No good. Right pulls down the rebound. The Boomers in the light purple, the Canberra Capitals, the two-time defending champs in the black with the blue accent. He's right, off the dribble, gets the shooter's roll. Boy, they needed that basket. Oh, I was holding my breath as well just to see if that would roll in. They, they did need it. Ends a run of 12 straight points for the Caps. Spark. Pulls the trigger. No good. Mansion on the boards. She missed the outing the first time these two teams played. Five rebounds, three assists for Mansion already tonight. That first outing was a 17-point win for Canberra. Melbourne didn't shoot a single three. They shot 16 of them. They didn't make a single three. It's probably more the point. Here's Magbegore. Shot goes up off the rim. Oh, board. Magbegore still fighting for it. Nice move, got it away to Beck. Swings it to the weak side corner. Right, shoots the three, yes! Is he right with the triple? Well, I think everybody on the bench on the floor was breathing a sigh of relief when uh, we saw we saw Ezzy go down and the ball kick to the corner and right nailing that three. So that certainly uh, swung the momentum or at least evened it off, Corbin. She's one of two. For the night, is he right from three point attempt? She's a 50% three point shooter on the year. Let's just put a light on Ezzy Magnagore, particularly her opening quarter. Doesn't quite have the same dominance in his second turn, but what have we seen from Ezzy tonight? 
Well, I, you know, the, her first quarter, she was dominant. She was posting up really well. She was taking it off the dribble from that uh, foul line area, which we can see just there in the vision. But I liked her work. I liked her early work. She was using her body. She was setting herself up early. Just that last possession before we go to Guy Malloy, she was strong on the boards. Now let's listen to what he has to say. Not sure we will on this occasion, but we'll check in with the Boomers camp shortly at half time. It's a nine point margin at the moment. And Goy, 10 points. They all came in the opening quarter. It's had been a real game of runs so far. Megan, you were close by to Paul Gorris, the coach of the Canberra Capitals. What was said there? One possession, one stop. That was the message in these final seconds on the eve of halftime. Smart, clean look. That's good. Pretty smart. Rarely misses when she's given that much room. Oh, she could not have been any more open. I'm not sure if they were in that zone and there was a miscommunication, but you cannot leave Brittany Smart open in the corner. That's her favorite shot. So bread and butter, spot up shooter. Is he right? Passing through, lost the handle. Chance for Canberra in transition. Rochi draws the foul. Counterman won. And Maddie Rochi for the third time tonight. A chance to complete the three point play. And Beck and Madge oh. closing in, and Rochi still finishes. If you're going to foul somebody, you have to foul them hard enough that they do not finish that shot. Rochi, great strength, great ability to finish under all that pressure. We've got a review coming up here. Keep a close eye on it. Is this a timing issue as to how much time's left on the game clock? Well, I think it, it might be that if... I don't think if the... Okay. I think the ruling is if the offensive player is ahead... I'm satisfied that she's picked... Yeah, I'm satisfied that she's picked the ball, or that she's um, dribbling the ball. So I have the foul here on... Number nine. Right, right, right. Nice. 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 Imagine. Okay, so we're going. Can you show me one more time, please? For the act of shooting, is that? Yeah, I don't to tell me. Well, if it's on Imagine, that was definitely before she got into her her yep. so just there. footwork. Yep. Roll it back, just a bit more, please. Yep. Yep. Now roll it forward. Yep. Okay. Perfect. No worries, we'll stay with the original decision. So okay, she hadn't you. gone into her shot yet, okay. I think it's just so an end line ball. Yep, no worries. Yep. So the foul's on number nine, no score, side ball here. So there you go, great access to be able to listen in. Isn't it? On the review. No score. And to have the TV cameras there to be able to, yep. to look at that so Thanks. precisely. No, no, it's going to be side ball because we've weighed the score away. So here we go, sideline ball. Four second differential as we close in on half time. Cabello out to Rochi. Down to Tolo. Into the corner. Shot misses from Rochi. Wright comes up with it. They've got six seconds down the floor. Here comes Magin. Great work, Rochi. Coming from behind just to knock the ball clear. It'll be catch and shoot scenario on the baseline inbounds for the Melbourne Boomers. 1.7 seconds left. Well, you knew that Magin was going to pull up any time, so good hands by Rochi. Let's see if they can come up with a, just a catch and shoot here. George gets it up top. Doesn't have a lot of time. Shoots off the dribble. Tolo 
Ends up on her backside, but that'll do us through the first half. The Melbourne Boomers by six. They led by 12 at quarter time. They led by 16 early doors in that second term. The Canberra Capitals have fought their way back into the game from that point on. They've outscored the Boomers to end the half 15 to five. Their lead cut to just six. Two possessions in it at half time. The Melbourne Boomers 41, Canberra 35. Win or go home semi final. Megan Huswade courtside with Mariana Tolo. I am with the co-captain of the UC Capitals that got out to 16 points in that term. Tolo, you've wheeled it back in. Yeah, it's, it was a tough start for us. I mean, they came out firing, they hit some shots and we know that they can do that. Um, we wanted to shut, shut them down early and we didn't, but now we have to play the game of catch up. And, and so it takes a little bit of extra and it's going to be a, a tough effort, but I think we're ready for it. You're the two-time champs, it's win or go home, but you're so seasoned and match hardened in finals. <laughs> You can do this. <laughs> yeah, and I think we can take confidence from that. We've been in these positions before, even in the grand final, where we've been down 16 points. So we know how to do it, and it's just about focusing on us and making sure we get through and play to the tempo that we want to play at. We'll let you get in there. Thanks for your time. Thanks, no worries. They've won three games this year, trailing at halftime, the Canberra Capitals. Very few other teams in the competition have been able to do that. It's six points, their deficit at halftime. What do you make of the match stats, Laurie Chiswick? Well, certainly when we looked at the rebound count at the end of the first quarter, it was quite different and, and, and the Capitals have brought that right back. I thought they were really dominant on the boards in that in that second quarter. Neither team are going to the foul line a lot. Um, they're settling for those outside shots, which allows for more rebounds. But um, wow, the percentage for the Melbourne Boomers, it's it's come right down and that's reflective in, in the number of points that they scored. Yeah, just nine points in the quarter for the Melbourne Boomers. He did shoot the ball at 71% of the opening quarter. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Well, they were free-flowing. They were in a groove, the Boomers, in that opening quarter. Well, you know, they certainly had more looks inside. I think they went away with that partially maybe what they were running, but, but also give credit to the Canberra Capitals. I think they took them out of that a little bit more. Um, so, you know, they need to go back inside again. And, and for the Capitals, well, I loved their running game. I loved how they pushed the ball. They were in the passing lane, so they got a couple of steals and some easy looks out there. And on the boards, they got some second chance opportunities. Rochi, Rochi's having a great game so far. Really, really influential. Ezzy Magbagor had 10 in the opening quarter. We'll learn a little bit more about her at halftime in this semi-final. a lot of Australian history with the storm, obviously.
just six points. More game analysis coming up shortly and then later tonight it's the Southside Flyers up against the Townsville Fire. That game is a major semi-final so the winner will go straight through to Sunday's grand final. Now courtside Megan Husswait is with us again. Uh, Megan, this week you've had a chance to catch up with so many of the great players and Ezzy Magbagor who of course features in tonight's game, she had 10 points in the opening quarter, is our latest WNBA champ. She sure is, and Ezzy Magbagor has had a year like no other. She was in the WNBA wobble over in the US. She came back to Australia and did hotel quarantine in Sydney before returning to Melbourne for just 24 hours to see her family. And then it was into quarantine again ahead of the WNBA hub season. I caught up with her in the hub. Take a look. So I was drafted last year by the Seattle Storm. Um, I was picked 12th overall, um, which was pretty cool. And you know, there's a lot of Australian history with the Storm, obviously with Lauren Jackson, um, you know, Abby Bishop, Jenna O'Hay, just the list goes on. So I think I was pretty excited to be drafted by them. Yeah, winning a championship and a WNBA championship is, you know, something that doesn't come along every day, I guess. And just to be able to do it in my first year as a rookie, was pretty cool and just to play with the players that I did and play against the players that I did was awesome and it was an interesting experience you know we were in the IMG Academy um, and weren't able to leave on our own or anything only to and from games via a bus so yeah we rode our bikes to training every day kind of just went to the hotel to get meals and kind of just lived with our teammates every day I guess people thought we would get sick of each other but it was it was fun just to, you know, be able to see and kind of be, you know, in that environment. I don't think it was always my dream to play elite level basketball until quite later on um, in my teenage years. So I started playing when I was seven or eight. And I think it wasn't until I made my first state team, which was with the Vic Metro um, top age under 16s, where I kind of, you know, thought, um, you know, like, hey, I'm, I guess I'm kind of, you know, good at basketball and it was something that I could do in the future. My next goal is definitely to, you know, go to an Olympic Games. I think, you know, hoping everything goes ahead with the Tokyo 2021 Olympics. Um, hoping to make that team. So I think, you know, there's still a selection process ahead. And, you know, we don't really know what that looks like at the moment just because um, everything is so uncertain. But I think, you know, hoping that does go ahead, that's definitely my number one goal. So I've just played in the WNBA with the Storm and now I'm back here in Australia playing in the WNBL. And, you know, it's always great to be able to come back and play in front of, you know, your home crown and, and in Australia as well. So I'm really excited to be back with the Boomers and, you know, it's a different season this year, just being in a hub, um, you know, being away from home for a majority of the season. But it's something that, you know, is new and it's exciting. We've definitely come close the last couple of years, um, you know, getting knocked out in the semifinals. So it's tough. I think, you know, we're always super close and just to fall off at the end. It's disappointing, so we're hoping to go one further. Yeah, definitely championship is something that we're all, you know, hoping to achieve this season. It was a hot start tonight again for Ezzy Magbagor, Laurie Chiswick. She had 10 points in the opening quarter and a big matchup too, obviously, given the bigs uh, for the Canberra Capitals. They've got the really the three-headed monster there in, in Froling, uh, Kelsey Griffin and, of course, Mariana Tolo. Yeah, it's great to see them go head to head. And um, in this game, I thought that Ezzy really dominated in the first quarter, and I thought Tolo a much better second quarter and took advantage of Ezzy. So I'd say right now it's pretty even going into the second half. The game's on the line. It's a cutthroat semi final, just six points in it, a two possession game. Momentum really with the Canberra Capitals on the back of what they were able to do late in that half of basketball.
Melbourne Boomers are a perfect six and six this year when leading at half time, but they got the team that'll just never say die against them on the other side of the floor, the two-time defending champions, the Canberra Capitals. There they are, ready to attack this second half, down six. Corbin Middlemass alongside Laurie Chiswick, Megan Husswaite is courtside. Megan, you spoke to Paul Goris a short time ago. What did he say? He was very happy that they kept the Melbourne Boomers to nine points in that quarter, but conceded 41 at halftime is too many. I asked him about Fritz Smart and her impact in the second quarter, and he said a veteran. Of course, her last final was here three years ago for the Melbourne Boomers in the grand final series loss to the Townsville Fire. What adjustments are you looking for here, Laurie? Well, I think for the Boomers, go back inside. Go go to, to Ezzy, go to, to Kayla George, and... Uh, See if you can get something happening there. And then that takes the pressure on your outside shooters as well. So, so keep putting pressure on the ring. For the Capitals, they have to make sure they start out strongly, tentatively, keep that physicality up that they had. And, uh, you know, rebounding for them. Rebounding was so strong in that quarter. Caratiana with three fouls. The only player on the court with as many. He's Garrick. Down low to Magdegore. Out to the weak side, Caratiana for three, misfires, and Griffin on the rebound. See, I'd still like to see Ezzy go to work a little bit more. Be physical with Griffin, see what you can do with her. Test the waters a bit more. She didn't score at all in the second quarter after 10 in the first. Is to pay her underneath the basket, out to Froling. Pump fake, drives, takes on Magdegore. Griffin, easy putback, good for two. It's one thing the Boomers need to be careful of, often on their closeouts, they come out of the stance, they put their bodies up, and then, as we saw, Froling able to drive on uh, Garrick. He's managing just two points in the opening half. Averaging 15 a game for the year. There is Magdagore inside, lays it home off the window. So that was a nice little re-screen, and then they went to help out. Nobody was able to uh, guard Magdagore on the slip from that screen. Both teams trading baskets to start this third turn. Griffin down low, Tolo trying to back her way in on her Opal's teammate and swatted away by George. Got a piece of the arm, said the ref, and a foul call. Tolo to the charity strike. Uh, Kayla really bailed her out in that instance because Tolo was capped the ball fairly low, and when she turned baseline side, you know, she just didn't have the good angle to finish that off, and uh, uh, but, you know, caught Kayla's arm. No dice on the first. Or the second. Six points as it was at the half. Two number nines, Rochi and Madgen continue to go at it. It's Garrick who started hot. Seven points in the opening quarter. Nine for the game now. There's Madgen off the dribble. So Rachi is wearing Madgen like a glove. It is really difficult for, for a test to get open, to make her moves. Rachi's got very quick feet, but in that instant, Maj uses her basketball IQ and uh, gets that jumper. Tolo underneath the hoop, reverse layup, and one to come. You know what I liked about that was the quickness of it. So she literally caught it and made her move. There was no think time in it. She just made it straight away. Two trips down the floor, two fouls on Kayla George, so she's up to three for the game. Tolo with the and one. Back to five points. Tolo making her presence felt early here in this third quarter. Magdagor, pump fake, shakes Griffin, lays it up. So again, that was smart. Imagine, looked like she was maybe going to try and post up Rachi. Griffin went to help that little bit, leaving uh, uh, Magdebor open and was able to drive it in. He's rolling down low, can't get it to go. Magdebor on the rebound. Let's imagine thought about the look on the perimeter. Rochi slips over, Garrick, clean look, shoots the three, misfires. George pulls down the O-board. Expected to make that, Maddie Garrick, the clean look. Magic catches the front of the rim. 
So two three balls, they missed them both. Yeah, both of them just that little bit short. Out to Rochi at the other end. Also catches the rim. Griffin the rebound, and the putback's good. Kelsey Griffin with the basket bank to a five-point game. Both teams grabbing their share of offensive rebounds that counting that number 13 to 9. It's the Capitals' way. Yeah, no, the blocking out, we just got to tighten that up and really focus on that. Time ticking down, off the dribble. Garrett shoots the three, doesn't go again. Here's Rochi on the rebound. Now 5 of 16 from the three-point line. The Burgers is Kelsey uh, Keely Griff. Keely. Takes the basket. Keely Frawling made Keely. that basket. <laughs> and she like Keely's and Kelsey's mixed up. Exactly. Keely Frawling, of course, with the basket. And, and she got her feet set nice and early. To fight. Here's George for three. Scooping up the long rebound. Garrick out to Caratiana, who shoots a three ball. And they've got one here, Melbourne. They came up with four in the opening quarter. They've hit just one since until now. And Ash Caratiana, the trademark three, pops it through. And it's up to six points. Megan Hussway, courtside. When Killy Frolling made that basket for the Caps just a few minutes ago, the crowd went wild. And when I say crowd, I mean the Frolling family here in Townsville. Mum, Jenny, Dad, Shane, twin Alicia, Grandma's here as well. And uh, they're certainly loving watching their beloved Keely on the Townsville floor. I knew, I knew I was in trouble when I said Kelsey out of the gates. So I thought there's a long way back from here. <laughs> there we see Shane in that picture, and I'm sure he's very oh. proud of uh, Keely and what she's doing with the Capitals. Mag the goal with the block. Rochi, too happy. Must have come off her last on the way down after the defensive efforts from Mag the goal. Here's Caratiana to Beck. Matt Begor turns, drives, lays it up. The points will count, the shot's good, the foul's caught on the way through. I just think that's such a good move and she's just got to try and do that a little bit more. She's athletic, she's long, she's quick. Take advantage of that. Kelsey Griffin. Picking up her second foul in the process. Magdegor at the line. That's good, so she's up to 17. Seven of those points coming in this quarter alone. Margin back out to nine. Just six at half time. Here's Britt Smart for three to try and hold the momentum. Misses again, and Magdegor on the boards. She's been big in the quarter, has he, Magdegor? She has a real focus. Now foul court here, away from the basketball, it's going to go against Maddie Garrick. <laughs> Won't be happy with that, Melbourne, handing possession back. Well, no, just when you feel like they had a little bit of uh, momentum going on. So, the collision there with Talia Tapaya. Smart. Chase back out to Rochi up top to Smart bounce pass down low Tolo back out to Smart. Oh, the front the sideline. It's momentum clearly with Melbourne here in the first five minutes of this third quarter. You could see Stella Beck was really forcing Brittany Smart to use her her left hand and force her baseline, not let her come back up right. comes Garrick up the floor. Nine-point game, momentum with Melbourne. Garrick on the step back. That's good. Back in Garrick. Nice stroke, knocks it down. And back to double digits, 11-point game. I don't think Maddie scored in that second quarter, so it's it's been a bit of a dry run for her. It's Tolo trying to make her way to the rack. Nice defending. Kayla George blocks the shot. Melbourne trying to ride this wave at the moment. They led it by 16 earlier. 
Here's Garrick, pulls up again. Back-to-back -back makes from the field for Matty Garrick. And yep. a timeout called by Paul Goris. Garrick up to 13 points. Good timeout for, for Coach Paul Goris. Uh, when Matty Garrick starts getting her eye in, you, you, you need to stop that straight away. And, and uh, so he needs to settle his chargers. And, and now, again, we're going to have to see a comeback from, from the Capitals, which takes so much energy. Plate from behind against the Southside Flyers. We jumped out of the gates and just touched on. I spent so many petrol tickets working their way back into that game and never able to truly come back and hit the front. I tried by 16 earlier here, got within five. Here's Paul Goris. Tolo's diving, Kelsey's like popping, okay? Look for that now, Kelsey, if they've got the little on you. Tolo will back out and Kelsey go, dive. Post up that one. Now they have the horn. We go back and stop. Got within three, in fact, here after the Froley make. Well, I did t speak to um, Paul Goris earlier today, and, and he, he was talking about that very thing about trying to reduce the amount of momentum swings they are, trying to keep things a little bit more um, consistent across the four quarters because. It's not only physically, it's mentally really draining to have to constantly be coming back. But here they see themselves in that same position. To trailing by six and a half time, they look up at the scoreboard, down by 13. Here's Griffin up top, shoots the three, a little long. And the boomers scoop it up. Final four minutes of the third term. Win or go home, semi-final, first of two tonight at Townsville Stadium. Still to come, the major semi. Flyers in the fire. Garrick tries for three in a row. Off the rim, Tolo awaited to pay up. Up the court it comes. He's smart, takes it with a hoop. Blocked from behind by Stella Beck. And the last touch on it from Brett Smart. Melbourne possession again. It's a couple for um, Stella Beck that's come from behind the back where she's just been able to reach over uh, a slightly smaller player in Smart and block that shot. Full court pressure from the Capitals. Oh, and a little loose on the handle. Matty Garrick, Smart, takes it up, and Garrick blocks the shot. Nice work, <laughs> Garrick. Just a little... A little casual on the dribble. Spart thought she had the turnover. And Gary, good enough to block it at the rack. How valuable has Britt Smart been in this game so far, coming off the bench? She's uh, really led by example in everything that she does. They've had 11 block shots, Melbourne Boomers. Capitals haven't had any in the game. Frolling on the inbounds. To pay it to Rochi. Up top. Trolling. Great Passes pass. down low to oh. Tolo. Goes around the world and doesn't drop. That was a really good look against that zone. Some high-low action. Momentum all with the Boomers. Up by 13. Right. Down to George. Turnaround chase. Good from Kayla George. And it's back to 15 points. The Boomers rolling at the moment. Frolling down low, nice shot from the short corner. Just took advantage of um, having that height on uh, on um, one of the players. Sorry, I've just uh, on Izzy Wright and really poised with that shot. And they need that. They need that from their teammates right now. Canberra got another look at it here. Tolo inside the Frolling, another block. Izzy Magbador. Swats it away, the attempted shot from Froling. Make that 12 blocks in the game for the Boomers. And switched on defensively. Beck eventually down low, Mag McGaw lost the handle over the baseline. Good defense by the Capitals, recognizing that Stella Beck was really trying to look it inside, look inside to Ezzy posting up there and, and Two people basically double teaming. At 
31 points in the opening quarter of Melbourne, uh, 32 points rather in the opening quarter of Melbourne, their highest scoring opening quarter of the year. Is Rochi deep two, got it. Back to back makes for the Capitals, so back to 11 points. I like what Rochi's doing out there. She's their leading scorer right now, looking at every opportunity she can. As he down lows, had a big quarter. Madgen on the perimeter, yes! Tess Madgen with the triple. That never looked like missing once it left her hand. Had four threes in the opening quarter. They've had just three since. But a critical one here. Three of 13, in fact, after quarter time. Froling looking for the extra pass. Ends up over the baseline. It'll be Canberra ball. Madgen ends up on the hardwood. That's desperation defense from the Boomers. They were talking out there. They were switching. Madgen was on a taller player. She was trying to front her. They were just giving it everything they had. Into Rochi it comes. 12 points for her so far in the game. Through three Boomers, loses the handle. Imagine again, closely guarded by Rochi up the floor, draws the foul here. I feel like that was just a little bit of a frustration foul on Rochi's part. Like I said earlier, she's been wearing Imagine like a, a, a glove, making her life really difficult. Big quarter for the Boomers. Leading by six at half time, and got it out to 14. A minute remaining. In his third quarter. Imagine out to the corner, right, shoots, draws the foul. Is he right in the corner? Shooting the triple, draws the contact. Matty Wright, she'll be called for it. Foul shot's coming up here for Wright. Yeah, just jumped into her as she released that shot. We'll have a good vision of it here. Touched on the fact there hasn't been a heap of foul shots tonight. Capitals are six of nine. These will be shots six and seven so far for Melbourne. And without a miss as a unit so far tonight. Is he right? This is only a fourth and fifth foul shots of the year. I was going to say, though, hasn't she had an impact again? Um, she's just been so... Cool, calm, and collected when she's out there. She makes good decisions, she goes hard, and of course she's there for her three-point shooting as well. You can add one to all of those. It's the three foul shots, just the one dropping. And now we're out right fouling to pay a 15-point game. Work to do for the Capitals. To pay it a Froling. Out of the corner, smart, sets, connects. That's her shot. That's her shot is a corner three. Big role in any team. There's a three and D kind of player coming off the bench. Big smart. There she is on the other side of the ball, forces the turnover. Melbourne gets a chance downhill. Shot goes up, draws the foul on Purcell. Sliding in the advertising audience. And Melbourne ahead of the line at the other end. Great job by Jade Melbourne. She just has no fear of anybody. Goes in hard, willing to take the contact, put her body on the line, goes flying. Now we see her at the line. This is a good little run for the Capitals. You know, there's only 13 seconds left. 75% foul shooter on the year. One of two on this trip. Final 10 seconds of the quarter. Magic, Purcell on the perimeter. A little long on the shot. And that'll do us through three. So the Capitals with all the momentum in the second turn, Melbourne. Flipping a switch.
season, all of Melbourne's nine wins came when they were in front at three-quarter times. So they're a perfect nine of nine, converting from this position. Two-time defending champs, their title defence on the line right here. Megan Husway, courtside. Business as usual in the three-quarter time address from Paul Goris. We've got to get stops and go. Expect them to also target Kalani Purcell as she starts for the Melbourne Boomers in this final term. He's rolling. Works her way through the key. Shot was blocked again on the way through. The Melbourne Boomers have made all the blocks look relatively easy too, and, and it's not. It's about spacing. It's about timing. Three of 14 from long range. The Boomers after quarter time. As Garrick puts the shot up late, doesn't go. So no score as yet in this final turn. Melbourne out to Griffin. Here's Tapea. Pulls the trigger. Misfires. Froling floating through, wanting to pull down the board. And Smart trying to keep the live. Had a foot on the baseline. Well, Froling got some serious airtime there when she was up trying to grab that rebound. So Beck, Madge, and George, Garrick, and Purcell, the five out there on the floor for the Boomers. Big final quarter coming up here. The Melbourne Boomers, the last two seasons, their campaign has ended on semi-final night. Losing a deciding game three last year in that series against the same opponent. It's Melbourne hustling after it, got a hand on it to deflect it over the sideline. And sometimes that's all you need, it's just that little bit of a deflection to be disruptive and, and get them out of their flow, get them out of their rhythm. And so the Capitals need to keep doing that. They need to be really proactive on defense. They need to dictate what's going on out here. Time running out, step back, three-pointer goes up from Garrick, doesn't drop. Beck comes down with it. Another look at the offense here for the Boomers. Great pass, Purcell down to George, finishes the play. Penina Davidson's pretty happy with that at the 13 points. Well, that's a real connection between teammates to be able to get that done so fast. And, and Purcell, we know, also has a good basketball IQ. Right now, Corbin, we are seeing why Melbourne Boomers are the best defensive team in the competition. They are anticipating things. They are getting in the lanes. They just look desperate to try and dive on any loose ball. They're impressive right now. Only three times in their 13 games as a side scored more than 55 against them at a three-quarter time. So, as you said, it's been a hallmark of their game, locked in defensively. Melbourne Boomers, they've kept the caps to 52 here. Start of the final turn. Melbourne in the corner, goes baseline, shot goes up, draws the foul. Melbourne did a good job there of uh, at least throwing the ball in the direction of the basket so that when she's fouled, we see her at the line right now. Whether it goes in or not, um, at least she gets her foul shots. Grew up in Terrelgan. Regional victorious, said, Goes to the Melbourne Demons Footy Club because her dad did. When she was asked why that was, she said, I think it's because it has something to do with my surname. Jade Melbourne against the Melbourne Boomers. Banks both at the line. We're good here. We're good. Don't hold. Don't hold. 11 point spread. Final quarter action. Win or go home semi final. The Friday night preliminary final for the winner. A flight out of Townsville for the loser. Here's Stella Beck up top, rips out, competing for the rebound. All oh, the Capitals almost let it go. Rochi can bring it up into the front court. Melbourne in the corner. Again drives baseline. Kicks it out. Rochi settles on the three. The front of the rim, no good. George the rebound. I think Matt, uh, Rochi was probably found herself so wide open that she, uh, you know, had to think about it, and that extra thought time uh, didn't help her. Oh, Purcell trying to dump it down low. George not awake to it. Campbell ball and some subs. Maybe Cabello off the bench today with Tapea returning to the starting five. And Stella back setting down for the Boomers.
Gizzy back on the court, which I, I, I suspected I, that she wouldn't sit for that long in this quarter. 17 and 7, her numbers for the night. Told our way to Cabello, and she's got a foot on the sideline as well, so no points on this trip for the Capitals. Final quarter of the season for one of these two teams. Now court again away from the basketball. Three fouls on Maddie Rodgie, three on Caratiana, and three on Kayla George. The only players in anywhere near foul trouble. You know, 11 points is by no means insurmountable for, for the Capitals. But right now, they just need to sort of take away. Melbourne yeah. are looking comfortable out there, both offensively and defensively. And so they've got to change that. As he deep two, side of the rim, and again another offensive board. Offensive rebounds are really hurting the Capitals. Second chance opportunities. Oh, oh a block. Back. No thanks on the shot from Kayla George. It was a good decision by Kayla to slip the screen. So instead of coming right up and setting a strong screen, she slipped her, recognizing how Tola was playing her, and really well timed block from Tolo. A lot of high boards in the game, so 14 to 13 in the offensive rebounds. Canberra's way by one. Garrick tries to make the tough shot as he mobs it up for the Boomers. Off the window. 13 points the margin. Cabillo draws the foul the against Test Imagine at the other end. It's nice that no player on the court or on the bench is in any serious foul trouble so that the coaches have to adjust their rotation. So, you know, what we see out there, the players can all go hard. Nobody's nobody's being bound by having four fouls, or uh, which is really great to see. And it comes, Gilly Froley. Out to Cabillo, puts the shot up, doesn't go. Put back Tolo, likewise. Magbacore on the board, so she's up to 19 and 9 for the game. Four blocks included for Ezzy tonight. Dominant display in this win or go home semi. Shakes Tolo here. He kicks it out to Gary, who should be called for the offensive foul. Cabillo set, waited for the contact, and the ref made the call. Good D by Cabillo, recognizing that um, Ezzy was going to probably drive it all the way or dish it as she did. Okay, here we go. They've got to make something happen. The Capitals down 13, 6 to play. Tolo to Cabillo, now Melbourne. Melbourne through the lane, the handoff. A fumble from Tolo disappears over the baseline, so the points go begging again. Oh, I think Tolo will be a little bit disappointed in the last couple of trips um, down the floor where they've had opportunities. It's either been a fumble or, or a short layup. And there'll be watch parties across the country for keen Australian basketball followers. The, the Denby Cinemas in Canberra, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, have a watch party tonight following the Canberra Capitals. I'm sure there'll be a few nervous bodies inside the cinema tonight. So a shout out to everyone watching on from there. As the Capitals, their title defense is on the line with five and a half minutes to go. Frawling on the rebound, pushing it up the floor. Rochi out of the corner. Here's Cabillo. Cabillo puts up the runner and misses. George can't scoop up the rebound. Tomlai makes good off the backboard. Still plenty of time left in this game and, and the thing is is that if the Capitals make a couple of baskets it just puts that pressure on the Boomers that they maybe start second-guessing their shots. Not the case right now. Out of the corner, Kayla George, the triple misses. Imagine will be called for the over the back foul. Tessa's third foul. That was really good blocking out by Cabillo, you know the size difference she had to really get stuck into her
Tolo. Up top, the handoff to Melbourne. Melbourne off the dribble. Step back, two, rattles out. Caratiana oh. comes up with it. Did everything but go. Foul on Froling down low. The wrestle with Caleb George. Boomers really have to maintain their composure. The, the Capitals are a, such a quality team. They're going to throw everything at them this last four and a half minutes. He's back. The goal catches the inbound. Up top to Garrick. George guarded by Tolo. Bounce pass trying to get it down to Ezzy. Rochi awake to it. Downhill puts the shot up. This is everything. This is the rim. Bouncing off the backboard is George on the rebound. Last quarter is their best performing term of the season, the Capitals. They're a better last quarter team than any other term. Nine and four for the year. We've got a fair deficit to wipe off now. 11 points with four to play. Gary to Magnagor. Magnagor trying to find her way to the bucket. She draws the foul. And Ezzy on the precipice of a double-double in a cutthroat semi-final. There's some foul shots coming up. Oh, she would have had a, a clear driving lane to the basket. Kayla, unfortunately, took her defender down there and put her hand up in recognition. My bad. I'm sorry about that, but at least she finds herself at the line. Megan Hussway, courtside. Kelsey Griffin checking in for the UC Capitals, her experience and sheer skill is going to be uh, very telling for them in these final minutes. Just 14 minutes on Sunday in that game against the Flyers. Didn't play at all down the stretch. Coach Goris said she's not injured. Uh, she's keeping her fresh for tonight. That's a killer right there. It is, and I think when the Capitals look back at this game, they're just going to look at all those old boards that um, Melbourne had. As he misses the shot, Canberra back the other way. 12-point game, three and a half to play. Caratiana a hand on it on the way through. The praise them defensively, the Melbourne Boomers. They have kept the Capitals to just four points in six and a half minutes. The Capitals' season is on the line. The timeout has been caught here as well. I feel like a couple of the perimeter shots are really tired shots. You know, they're hitting the front of the rim. They just don't quite have the distance. Um, I'm sure both teams, in fact, all teams in the competition right now are, are pretty weary. Rip through the elevator. Okay, so look at Jake with a three. If not, we got there. Once you screen it, Kelsey, sprint out to there. Tolo on the rim. So we got one, two, three, a rim run. Then we've got to be shadow up the floor. Okay, we've got to play at the ball. Okay. Capitals have had six more field goals tonight than the Boomers. Three point numbers. Both teams 30% or below. Melbourne had were four of six in the opening quarter. They're now seven of 23 from three-point land. The Capitals three of 16. So four made threes the difference. And that's the difference in the game, 68 to 56. Megan Hasway, you're close by to this huddle for the Melbourne Boomers. Yes, we need more ball movement. Let the ball do the work was the message from Guy Malloy. It was very inspiring stuff, though. He's got that look in his eye, Guy, as the Boomers close in on an elimination final win. Brittany Smart, clean look. Oh, got it. Wow. Big triple for Smart. Brings it back to nine points. Shooting early in the shot clock. It was a wide open look though, way back from the three point line. Melbourne hits the floor, no call, nine point game. Imagine four seconds left on the shot clock. Shot goes up, just goes in. The shooters roll for Tess Imagine. There were a few nervous hearts when that ball was just rolling around the rim. The basket drops for Melbourne. It's back to 11 points. That was such a veteran move by Tess Madgen. Should I pass it in to Ezzy? Should I not? And there is the response. Caps are smoking all of a sudden out of the timeout. Back-to-back -back triples. The margin's eight points. 
The Boomers really need to use the clock, not rush things. Right off the window, banks the two. Making sure they're still coming up with some oh. points. Underneath the basket, Melbourne, the reverse layup. Nice bounce pass from Rochi. You could just see that developing. Rochi was just willing her to make that backdoor cut. That's eight quick points for the Capitals. They've moved as freely as they have done all night on the offensive end. Straight out of the timeout. Can they get some stops at the other end? Magin driving to the basket, shot up, and it's good. Tess Magin rides the contact from Melbourne. Just such an experienced finals campaigner, Tess Magin. Baskets at both ends at the moment. Melbourne free in the corner. The teenager, no good. And right the rebound. 100 seconds left. You know, this is something that Melbourne would just... Oh, oh. tapped out of the hands of Magin. Here's Griffin, hands it off. Rochi's shot's good. Make that an eight-point game. About 22 to play, timeout called by Coach Guy Malloy. Hold the phone. Oh, exactly. I mean, crazier things happen with a minute and a half to go or less than a minute and a half to go. There was a game in the regular season last year. I think Melbourne led by about 10 points with barely any time remaining in the game. And Canberra won it. And it gave Canberra the season split and the advantage, the home court advantage, obviously, in the semi-final series. Canberra went on to actually win that game. I'm sure Melbourne fans wouldn't want me to remind you of no. that moment right now, but it gave them home court advantage in the deciding game three. And obviously, we know what happened there after the Capitals went on to win that game. Final two minutes, so no audio from the timeouts, which is why you, you can't hear from Guy Malloy at the moment. Well, he would just be saying, we need to make sure that we use the clock. We're strong with the ball. Capitals are going to be all over them trying to get deflections, trying to get steals. They just have to weather that. Set some screens for each other, but make sure we use the clock. And then back at that other end, you get them one and done, and that's it. And the Capitals need some quick threes um, to keep themselves, to give themselves any chance. We can paraphrase, do it secondhand. Megan Husfeit was close by to Paul Goris. What was happening there, Megan? Well, the <laughs> very calm, cool, and collected from Paul Goris. They've been here, done it before, and they've got confidence if they can get some steals here, that they can still win this game. This is the Sweaty Palms time of the night. A minute 22 to go, eight-point game. Melbourne playing in front with possession in the purple. George to Madgen. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Madgen back to George. Baseline, Jay goes up. It's no good. Tolo the rebound. Canberra back down the floor. Matty Rocci, the leading scorer, tries to put the shot up, no foul ball. Road the contact, Melbourne come up with it through Magbegore, and now Madgen crashes into Melbourne, who's caught for the block. Wow. Let's look at this, Rocci to the rack. The referee was on the blind side of the, the hand from Garrick is the one that we probably need to see. I think the ref had the same view as us. Yeah, no, we couldn't, you couldn't tell where her hand was, but um, you know what? You have to move on. Less than a minute to go in this elimination semi-final. Timeout called again. Guy Malloy wants to chat. Eight points, three possession game. Make the goal with a big double-double and a knockout game. 20 and 10, her numbers. Garrick and Izzy Wright, both with 13. Let's have a look at that well, yeah. shot from Matty Rogge. Yeah, no, I think that uh, that looked clear, you know, as from, from what we could see. And, and, you know, let's give the referees full credit. We, we don't even, sometimes when we see it in slow motion or the replay, you know, it's hard to tell. And they've got to make that split-second decision. Um, so, so credit to all the referees that have been in the hub for this time and, and for what they've contributed to this season. Most successful franchise in the history of the WNBL, the Canberra Capitals, nine titles. We were equal with... So when you, sorry, I'll just explain this. When you call a timeout and there's this amount of time left, you have the, you have the uh, choice 
of taking it at the other end and having a full 24 second clock yep. or advance the ball but then 14 seconds is put on the clock so guy's obviously chosen he'll choose a, choose a shorter clock but not risk getting the ball stolen when you're bringing it up are you surprised by that no not really right in the margin foul caught on brit smart 54 seconds on the game clock thank you Let's go, guys. Two shots. So we're in the bonus now. So foul shots coming up for the Boomers. I think these foul shots are going to tell us a bit, Laurie, as to uh, how much drama is going to be in the remaining 54 seconds of the game. Deep breath for Tess. Imagine. Got the first. 73% foul shooter on the year. So if she misses this, that's three threes. But uh, look, I think she's going to make this shot and put the game out of reach. Oh. Misses. Matt McGaugh trying to pull down the rebound. Rochi the early advance. Britt Smart underneath the basket. Shot up. It's good. So margin at seven points. Still a three possession game. Melbourne back with it. 45 seconds to go. What a foul. Trying to foul. Eventually they stop the clock. And Garrick will be the one that headed the foul line. So the idea is when you're down and you're coming back with this short amount of time left in the game is that initially on an inbounds pass, you try and get a steal. But if you can't, you've just got to foul straight away, which we see Rachi and Melbourne did. Garrick makes the first. and Griffin must block out in this situation. Garrick makes both. Ice cold at the free throw line. Maddie Garrick, 15 for the night. As you see, there are first foul shots. Taylor George sits down for the moment. Nine point game. Rochi for three. Off the side of the rim, imagine. Pulls up. With the rebound, away to Izzy Wright. Kalani Purcell up into the front corner. Nine second differential. Time against the Capitals now. Magnagore. Shot goes up, grabs her own rebound. New 14. Time ticking away on the Caps. Well, Melbourne fans will be on their feet right now. Thrilled that their team is at least advancing to that preliminary final on Friday night. The foul eventually comes on Jade Melbourne, and there's her five, so she's fouled out. What a debut season it's been for Jade Melbourne. Hasn't it? She's been so fun to watch and such a revelation, and it just bodes so well for the future of uh, Australian basketball. She's one of many that we've sort of, you know, unearthed this season. Major makes the first of the night. It's all obligatory from here, though. This is the second. Griffin grabs the rebound. They're finally going to overcome the hurdle as Griffin shoots a three. The concluding stages, but it'll be the Melbourne Boomers' night. Gabillo with the last shot. The Melbourne Boomers survive in advance through to the preliminary final. And after three seasons, the Canberra Capitals' title reign is over. The Boomers 78, Canberra 68. Melbourne through to the Friday night prelim. The Caps are going home. Oh, they are, and you know that three-peat was such a dream of theirs, but I give them full credit. They're such a great program. You know, to be successful for three years in a row, two back-to-back -back titles, and now in these finals, full credit to the organization, to the coaches, to everybody on, on and off the court. Um, what a wonderful program, but Melbourne, Wow, you know, after having lost two years in a row in the semi-final, they'll just be breathing a sigh of relief and be really confident that they can go a step further and another step for the further to that grand final. What a night for the Melbourne Boomers, nine and four on the season. It's been difficult for them in recent times to win at this time of year. They've been contenders year on year, but without sort of making it deep in the playoffs, 
they take themselves at least another week away through to Friday night with the hope to play in this year's decider. Let's kick it down to Megan Husswaite, courtsiders with Ezzy Magbegore. I am with Ezzy Magbegore and she played a game tonight like she's just come off a WNBA championship. How was that, Ezzy? It was, you know, it was a big game for us. We knew we had to come out um, and start well. Um, you know, it's always a great contest against Canberra and we just stuck it out for four quarters and got the win. You are the best defensive team in the comp. You showed it tonight. It was a block party. It was, yeah. I mean, it helps when you've got players like Kayla, Kalani, and even our guards blocking it as well. So, yeah, exciting game. Now, are you going to stick around and watch uh, the next game and who might be your opponent on Friday night in the preliminary final? Yeah, I mean, Friday's going to come around quick, so we've got to get back, get recovery in. Um, you know, we might catch the end of the game on TV, but, yeah, recovery is really important, so just hop in the ice baths and get it done. <laughs> you win to fight another day. See you on Friday. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Hard to, believe, hard to believe she's still only 21 years of age, as he made before. And we look at her all the time and think, is Essie going to take over a game? Well, boy, she's done that tonight. 20 points and 11 rebounds in a one-and-done semi. Well, and I know Guy Malloy has challenged her to do that. Own a game, assert yourself. And, and we, we saw her do that, which was just so exciting. Here is Guy Malloy with Megan Houseway. Oh, yeah, they always will. He is with me right now, and he's just taking a deep breath because, Guy, that was some ride from the sideline. Well, look, um, they're uh, two-time champions for a reason, so they uh, just a, such a physical and hard team to break down. And, um, you know, we were good if we can get past the two passes in our offense, but because they put their guards are really quick, they put a lot of pressure on the ball and they play the lanes really hard, it's difficult to kind of get into much. So, um, yeah, after we got the lead, uh, luckily for us, we were able to just keep a little bit of momentum. You showed again tonight why you're the best defensive team in the league. It was a bit of a block party, I just said to Ezzy. Yeah, well, the, the games are really physical, aren't they? And, and I think both clubs have prided themselves on their defence um, for a number of seasons. And it's always an arm wrestle when we play these guys. So uh, I know we'll have some really sore bodies tonight. Do you take a breath now and watch the next game? They're coming out to warm up. You'll play one of these sides on Friday night. Yeah, we will. Um, just really happy to be alive and continuing to play. You are alive and we'll see you on Friday. Congrats, Great. Guy. Thank you. So Guy Malloy, the coach of the Melbourne Boomers and his team moves on to Friday night's preliminary final. They really marked themselves against the Canberra Capitals. They're the two-time defending champions, but they didn't get close to them two years ago. Last year, they split their series in season two and one. In the finals, two and one, it was the Caps who eliminated the Boomers. This time around, they returned the favour. Gosh, looking at Guy Malloy there, it looked like he played the game himself. He, 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 he had that glow about him at the end of a game where you're just so relieved. But you know what? To take that next step, to go into the, to the preliminary final, I think that's... It's like a monkey off their back. So I, I think whoever they play, they'll be really confident and, and really have that focus of getting into the grand final. And yes, it was a battle tonight. The Boomers are one of only two teams to have beaten the Southside Flyers. It's the Townsville Fire who are an interesting matchup for them. They haven't beaten them in two starts, and obviously they'll be playing Townsville on their home floor. That obviously has a bit to do with what's coming up next. So this is what it all means. A win for the Melbourne Boomers, 78 to 68. So up next, the major semi-final coming your way. The winner to go straight through to Sunday's grand final. They get the rest that comes along with that as well. Four nights sleep without happening to play. The Southside Flyers and the Townsville Fire. And then the prelim, we know the Melbourne Boomers are there. They'll play the loser of tonight's late game. And then for Sunday, on Sunday, for all the marbles, 2.30 our coverage starts for the grand final. Can't get any better than that, Corbin. You know, a great first game. I'm, I'm really excited myself to watch this next game to see how, how the young Townsville team can, can come up and compete against this, um, you know, all-encompassing Southside Flyers. Should be great. For our ABC audience, that's where we'll leave you for the night. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. For everybody else, though, stick around. Major semi-final coming up next. It's the Flyers and the Fire on, your, on the way. The Melbourne Boomers are through to the prelim. The Canberra Capitals, their title reign is over.